the final method that we are coming into is the accounting rate of return method so accounting by the word accounting only you should uh, think of the bookkeeping accounting method where you'll have the pat for each and every year suppose for the five years for the upcoming five years if I want to calculate my accounting rate of return so on that we'll have my uh, EBIT or PAT you can say EBIT into 1 minus tax will give you the PAT so this average income divided by your average investment is the accounting rate of return so this method is simple though simple but it's like it has got um, one of the flaw is it is taking only the amount that is given in the accounting period see this is the method we are applying for calculation of accounting method so if you have your EBIT for say one year two year three years four years and five years you will apply depreciation to get from EBITDA you'll get EBIT by deducting your depreciation then suppose you apply some tax rate which can be 30 percent or say 50 percent and finally you're getting your PAT okay EBT or PBT so this is the amount that you have invested at the beginning of the period on that you have applied tax of say 8000 every every year which is straight line method and you have come to the result called here average average outflow this final amount here and this will give me the final formula so after calculation of this you'll find that this is your total outflow and this is the inflow so you'll divide it and get the value for accounting rate of return so suppose accounting rate of return here comes to be around uh, say 4 or 5 percent so if this accounting rate of return is greater than the amount that your management has invested then you will accept the project see ARR is higher than the minimum rate established by the management then you will accept else you will reject the project so accounting may method is simple it is accounting data and also it is taking into account uh, accounting profitability but here one of the biggest flaw is it is not taking cash flows into account which is what we are thinking of in the whole capital budgeting terms and it does not take into account time value of money now uh, we have come for so many like we have learned uh, around five methods out of which your NPV internal rate of return were discounted uh, and uh, the other non discounted forms were uh, payback period and accounting rate of return so out of this five ways which is the best way to invest you can summarize upon as there are projects called conventional projects and non conventional so conventional projects are the one where you always have positive inflows so here you will have positive inflows and here it can be for some year it can be positive inflows for some year it can be negative inflows so what is the biggest flaw with the conventional and non-conventional method is if you apply net present value for both this method like for some projects if every year you're getting positive return that is conventional project for those projects your net present value as well as your internal rate of return both will be positive so see come come across this thing so what does this negative means negative means your cash outflow and if you move for three years all the three years you're getting positive return so this is known as conventional now non-conventional is something like this first year there is cash outflow then there is three year cash inflow again there is cash outflow again two year inflow and so on these are known as con non conventional cash flows so what is the biggest drawback of non, -con non conventional cash flows in applying internal rate of return is internal rate of returns become or gives you two values for this project like if I if I show you in graph it will be very clear now see 
since it uh, the whole formula that we have used for IRR and NPV is like uh, C0 divided by or C factor divided by 1 plus R to the power N this is the whole factor we have in, in used where this is sigma over the years I is equal to 1 to N 1 to N this is C I and then you have C 0 so if you look for this formula in this denominator part you can think of like for first year it will be 1 but for second year it is 2 to the power 2 so whenever we come across to the power 2 or 3 it becomes a quadratic equation in case of non-conventional projects this quadratic equation will give you two rate of returns so this is an example where you get two internal rate of return see here you get one internal rate of return and here is also another internal rate of return now for the same project how can there be two internal rate of returns so this this creates the biggest confusion or this is the one of the biggest confusion or flaw of internal rate of return where you get two internal two different internal returns for same project the reason can be one of the so this is the reason why NPV is always considered as better a better method for calculation of investments and IRR is IRR is not that very better as NPV the reason is these cases where non-conventional projects comes in you get two internal rate of return which creates the main confusion but you should think from other thing or other way is these internal rate of returns are nothing maybe it is in the point of view of lending money and borrowing money so those are the situations which has happened with this project that somebody has lent some money where you will get inflows over the year and if there is some borrowing there will be outflows over the year so all in all what I want to say from this whole project is since IRR is giving you two rate of return, it is not the best way to use IRR compared to NPV.